it's all a game, just to get your money. I question the, uh, the true intentions, like maybe they're selling this information. Generally speaking, it's excessive. The, the, the fact that there's ads all around us all day, every day, that it just becomes our normal day-to-day -day life. Products are advertised that aren't really in, in people's best interests. Advertising is, I think, a necessary evil to promote yourself. I'm a business owner, and I think it's vital. Of course, it's always intrusive advertising, but it can be really well done, you know? Funny is always a great way to do it. When you're online, it's, if there's a will, there's a way. The ones that pop up. Pop up ads. The pop up. Pop ups on the internet, that's infuriating. I know that they get their money from ads, and I, and I tolerate it. I never click on it. I usually just click off of it or push the X mark so I don't have to look at the advertisement. I don't click on any of it because I have to get to my porn faster. Sometimes it's done well, and when it's done well, it's enjoyable. It's very sleekly integrated, even less invasive. Just being yeah. honest about what you're trying to sell. But when it's done poorly, it really is annoying. It's a hard thing advertising. <laughs>、No traditional advertising doesn't apply the way it always has. You know, just like you're seeing product placement evolve on television because people aren't watching commercials the way they did five, 10, 15 years ago. I think some form of product placement and integration of brands into the content itself is critical. I think if you started to look around at the information that you have access to in this world, you would start to realize that most of it is made possible and at your disposal because of advertising. I think that advertising, though it gets a bad rap a lot, is actually kind of an interesting combination of marketing and sociology. I kind of actually did grow up in marketing and sales. My mom did it corporately. She, she just understands people, so, which means that it makes it much easier to manage your team. It makes it much easier to understand from a marketing point of view why, what people need and why they buy to begin with. There's certainly elements of it that can be taught, but I think a lot of it is actually just kind of intuition. She fits in every sort of way, you know, outgoing, articulate,、uh, bossy. <laughs> True. We have a sales team that is so fluent in what we're doing. You know, they're so ahead of us in so many ways where they're like, we need to go sell this, and this is the date, and we need to. And it's like, whoa, guys, like, we're just, we're, we're still trying to make a website. The idea of this call is. Just at this point,、uh, with launch kind of coming up, going over the strategy for tablet, mobile, and desktop, and how we sell across all of those. How do you stay on top of technology to better improve the experience for consumers? What's nobody ever thought of before? A lot of, of what we do is late nights here,、um, figuring that out. A lot of times, like when you see skins, you go to other si like gaming sites, and I know we certainly have this problem on Joystick, it's like, There'd be stuff that would come in that was just so gross. It, looks, it looked like somebody literally whipped it up in MS Paint and jammed it on the sides and it scrolled. It just didn't look appropriate. And、uh, to some degree, I also want to be involved in so much as making sure that we don't allow something really gross to get on the page. Again, similar to the TV model and the print model, it's about engagement, it's about catching your eye.、Um, that's really the way it's moved. And what's very different about those mediums and digital is you can actually do something incredibly creative. We ensure, in, in terms of design, that it's elegantly presented rather than being obnoxiously in, in someone's face. People don't just want to have ads next to things anymore. They want to feel like their campaign <coughs> works within the context of the site. Design and the business needs, I think, can match because I think that when design takes the forefront, Better advertising opportunities will follow. Which I think for a lot of us that were nervous about this whole idea of like, you know, hey, we're gonna let you hire a bunch of the best writers in the industry. It's gonna cost a lot of money. Don't worry about it. We'll take care of making money. And we're like, but you, but you don't make money online anymore. Nobody does that. You know, you have to sell your soul or you have to run a bunch of crappy content with great headlines so you can get on Google and get all your Google juice. Our goal is to, like, for, to train users to use our site. And if, if people are used to being like, oh, well, I know when I scroll down here, I'll just look and see all the recent features, like, where the hell did that go? So why can't this be an advertising and then this one just goes? Because it'll look like shit. That's what I'm saying. That means, like, the page will grow from. Why can't, hold on, why can't this go 
This is the add one, and now this one goes here. Because there's, that, that doesn't exist. I think to do this well, we have to be on the same team as our editors. We have to protect our brand value just as much as we need to sell our brand to advertisers. They have a similar kind of respect for that church and state wall, where they know it's acceptable and appropriate to talk to us about and what isn't. You mentioned that if they announce this coupon or this 20% back, et cetera, that you'd probably do a news post on it. Would you have any interest um, in, in being the first to post that, meaning like, if we talk to them and we could post it before it was announced, or do you think that just sounds like they paid us? If we're putting it like into an editorial slot, it's a little, yeah, it, it is standing on that line, if not stepping up. Okay, that's fine. I have had many dealings across all publishers where I work on a really cool integrated campaign and then the review score comes out and it's a 4.5 out of 10. It's tough for me as a seller, but it's one that anybody who really wants to read unbiased com comments and stories is going to appreciate and respect ultimately. I do believe advertisers are much more open-minded than they're often given credit for. They want to be involved in this world. They want to do it in a way that's real and genuine and you know, increasingly social. I don't buy the idea that they're trying to darkly influence the coverage or, or that, that all sorts of nefarious things are going on behind the scenes here. It's actually fairly transparent. In an ideal world, every single person on our site would find every ad we serve relevant. You don't go to our sites to consume advertising. We get that, right? But I fundamentally believe that our goal is to create an environment where readers and writers and brands can all coexist. We sell advertising based on impression, on view of an actual ad banner. So it makes it incredibly difficult to project what those views or those impressions will be on a product that doesn't exist. Are we all concerned about the impression amounts that have been on those plans that have been going out? On For Polygon launch. For Polygon launch. I'm worried about all impressions on Polygon for the rest of the year. I mean, there's just no... So how much would you estimate that that's Polygon is sold at for November, December? In terms of share of voice, uh, it's 10% that's sold. You say that again? 10% He's saying November, December, that's the percent share of voice sold, so not like launch. November then, like for the first month of launch, how much are we sold? 10%? 15 to 20%. 15 to 20%. 10 to 20%, 20% launch. How, Brian, how is that possible? <laughs> during this process, during the lead up to launch, you know, one person could say you actually have 10% when you actually have 75%. Um, sold and you know that becomes increasingly confusing and it's just it's daily communication with editorial and our finance and you know everybody that's involved it's, it's the biggest challenge with selling a launch which is that things change and it doesn't matter what day you say it's always going to be something different and that's part of launching something you want to make sure you do it right the more work we do the more work there is left to be done um, Launch is an exciting milestone, but it's just that it's, it's the milestone before a whole new series of work begins. This is possible because we have this incredibly hardworking and passionate group of people. It's a tremendous responsibility, but it's also a huge honor to be a part of it. We're here in New York. This is New York, New York City, the Big Apple for what I'm affectionately calling Polycon 2012. So this is a good opportunity for us to get together and really talk about the process in a big chunk. 16 people in a room, that's a lot of mouths. 